folks, Steve Bird here, and welcome back to the channel. This is a video I've mentioned uh, a few times lately to folks, so I'm finally getting around to getting that done. Um, you may have seen in the video I had just released prior to this one how kind of busy and hectic things have been around here, and I apologize for the, uh, the large gaps between videos, but I'm trying to catch up now. Anyway, you may wonder why I have two Solarks behind me. Well, this one is an EMP hardened 12K outdoor model, and this one is an EMP hardened 12K indoor model. This is the one we've been using that's been detailed in uh, my videos, as well as uh, one by Scott Hunt, Engineer775 here on YouTube as well. And the reason I have two, here, two of them here is not that I'm stacking them yet, but our Wi-Fi dongle that is on the bottom of this one here uh, stop transmitting a signal so I can no longer use the app to see what was going on uh, with our power which is we get used to just being able to glance at your app and see what's going on you, you don't want to live without that so I called Solark's tech helpline and I uh, worked with Fernando and he he walked me through a few things meter and a few a few pins and, and other such things and uh, determined that the comms board uh, was bad and unfortunately it's not something that's field replaceable it's not easily accessible and I talked to Scott about this this issue since he's my, my go-to guy and all this and he mentioned that the, the same com board is used on a lot of different products and you know it's just it's just the way it is it's just something that occasionally goes bad but uh, luckily Solarks uh, they got a great warranty and great folks there so they're taking care of me normally uh, one of your options could be to take your existing unit off the wall, put it in a box, and ship it to them for warranty repair, and then they'll ship it back. However, I'm off grid. If my solar came off the wall, we'd be in a blackout situation until it came back. So they're kind enough to do a swap with me, but they didn't have any indoor units in stock. And clearly, we don't need an outdoor unit. We've got all of our electronics in our solar shed. Uh, but it's what they had, so they were willing to provide it so that I could do the swap and then send the other one back. And thanks a lot, Fernando, again, for, for helping me work that out. So, what are the differences between the indoor and the outdoor? Well, here in a minute, I'll give you a closer view. Uh, but a few of the things that I noted just looking at the specs list on each one of them. Uh, and I'm no engineer. This is just, just numbers that I've, uh, I've noticed uh, to be different between the two. On the outdoor model, you have a 12 kilowatt MPPT and a 9 kilowatt charger and 9 kilowatt inverter. On the indoor, you have a 12 kilowatt MPPT with an 8 kilowatt charger and a 9 kilowatt inverter. So there's a little bit more in the outdoor unit on that aspect. Also, the battery voltage is listed the range. For the outdoor unit, the minimum is 43 volts, the nominal is 48, and the max is 63. That maximum number comes in handy when it comes to uh, equalizing your batteries, which is I have in a different video. And the indoor unit shows a minimum of 43, a nominal of 48, and a max of 61. So there's a little difference there as well. Uh, the other thing that I noticed that was a difference was the uh, max continuous AC pass-through power for the outdoor unit. It's 15,120 watts and 63 amps, and the indoor unit is listed at 12,000 watts and 50 amps. Again, I'm no engineer. I'm just a do-it-yourselfer that likes to uh, just dig in and uh, get things done himself. So take that data for what it is, but I'm just letting you know the differences that I've seen right up front. Um, some other differences is just kind of, kind of the layout and how they're constructed, which uh, let's take a closer look at that now. Okay, now we're taking a little bit closer look up close. Sorry if there's a little background noise. The uh, cooling fans on this one are currently running, so I haven't uh, taken it offline yet. But basically, the main structural differences that I can see, the panel to access all of the electrical connections, which they all go in through the bottom. Uh, it's got some nice uh, uh, easy access stuff, like battery disconnects, and then your breakers for your load, your grid, and your gen input. Just nice, quick, and easy little access there. But there's captured bolts, Allen wrench type bolts, that you have to take off to remove the bottom panel to get to the wiring. Whereas on the outdoor unit, and I really like this feature, you've got latches and a hinge, and everything's available in there. 
with a nice, you know, weatherproof seal. So I like being able just to just to, to flip it open and be able to get to everything. Another difference on the indoor unit, your cooling fans are on that side. On the outdoor, the cooling fans they look a little more robust. I'm not sure if they are. Uh, it would make sense, I guess, if it could potentially be outside in the sun. Uh, or on the left side on this one, as is the PV disconnect and the Wi-Fi dongle connection. Whereas on the indoor, the PV disconnect and the Wi-Fi dongle connection are underneath. So if you were making this swap and you had, uh, you know, conduit, you know, like most people would do using building codes, uh, this would be a little bit of an annoyance because some stuff, some stuff's in different places, and where that where the wires go to connect things inside are a little different. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, since I didn't use conduit, and a lot of people made fun of me for that. It'll be really easy to move move wires around and make things fit, and I won't have to won't have to redo that. But uh, so that, in a nutshell, is the biggest differences that I can see between the indoor and the outdoor version. Uh, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the installation process, and we'll see what else we figure out. Hey folks, one important thing to remember. Uh, when you're dealing with solar. Uh, I'm out of my array right now and here's a PV array DC isolator also known as a cutoff switch that I got from Scott when we uh, sourced all the parts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off because you can't really stop solar panels from producing power. So that power is coming from the panels down the line into the conduit in the ground and over to my solar shed and the wires going to my solar would be hot regardless of whether I shut the solar arc down or not. So we're shutting these off at the source to make sure I don't zap myself inside the building uh, from all this uh, marvelous sunshine power. So let's get back to work. Okay we're back inside the solar shed. You notice all of a sudden it's a little bit darker and quiet. The solar arc is no longer humming on along because I've got everything shut down to make it safe for our work. Now these are the the wires coming from that one solar array. They go into this one MPPT port, which there are two, and the second one is for the expansion project I have for the 20 more panels on the ground mount that I've mentioned in other videos. But so I wanted to go out and disconnect the, uh, the panels from the rest of the system via that uh, PV array DC isolator so that I wouldn't zap myself in here with the power that's being produced uh, by the panels. The other connections we've got in here while we're at it, you've obviously got your main battery leads. And these two little guys in slot number one and two, the easy, those are the uh, generator remote start uh, connect, uh, connection. Um, these two wires in slots nine and 10, are for the battery temperature sensor. And in the others, we've got our uh, our generator inputs going into our grid input so that the uh, generator input can be used for uh, other things uh, such as a uh, smart load out or um, some AC coupling in, which is an option for later. And then we've got our, our loads coming out. So you've got your your neutral bus, your your ground bus, and then your hot leads. And that just happens to be engineer 775, so let's see what he's got to say. Hey folks, back with you. Um, I had to take that phone call. I was actually about this video. I had uh, texted Scott earlier and asked him a question, which I will resolve with you folks here in a minute. Anyway, kind of back to, back to what I was doing here. Um, Getting ready to disconnect the batteries. I've already taken the solar offline, the um, remote start, the battery temperature sensors, and then all of our uh, ins and outs right there. I'm going to take all of those loose, and then we're going to take this bad boy off the wall. How it's mounted is you have uh, the bottom tabs on this box, which you can see there on that one, that just bolt directly to the wall. And up here you've got a rail that bolts to the wall. 
and I'll show you one of those. Here's the the rail that came with the other one. Sorry about that clumsy camera work there. This bolts to the wall and then the solar arc via that bracket right there just, just hangs on that. So it's actually pretty easy to mount to the wall. You mount this and just hang the solar arc on that and then, uh, then it's pretty easy just to go ahead and put your bottom four bolts in and you're good to go. So let's finish getting this unhooked and uh, we'll get the other one up and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. Okay, we've got it off the wall. You can see all our, our wires there, except for the battery cables. They're down on the floor. So here's the bracket I was talking about that it hangs on. So this bracket is the same. I compared the two between the old style or the indoor and the outdoor, and it's the same bracket. So I'm not going to swap this out. I'll just leave the bracket they sent me in the box with the one I'm sending back. So it's a pretty clean way it installs. Um, just the bottom two legs go here and the top just hangs right there so once you've got all that laid out it just hangs on the wall and um, you can get, get right back to your wiring as quick as can be all right folks we are back in business the install is complete and uh, we got everything set up so uh, she's up and running i took a uh, there's a lot of different settings in here uh, if you go to settings there's basic setup which is a bunch of tabs, battery setup. There's a bunch of tabs there. You can't see them through this camera, so no, no point showing you. But anyway, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different settings in that touchscreen menu. I took pictures of everything because we had very specific settings set up in there for uh, our batteries and our generator and, and uh, where the input the generator was coming from and AC frequencies and all kinds of stuff like that. So I, I had all kinds of things set up in there that I got both from uh, the Scott Hunt's help, Engineer 775, and uh, the Solark's uh, tech folks. So I took I took pictures of all of those before this started so I could uh, put all my uh, my settings back in. A few things that are different inside this box uh, versus the the uh, indoor unit, like I said, other than the handy dandy door there. Um, a few things are backwards on this one. The the positive minuses are flipped, so make sure you read read the labels. Um, and as far as where the inputs go for the battery temperature sensor and the start. By the way, I said that backwards earlier. Um, one and two is the battery sensor and the uh, 9 and 10 on the other one was the remote start for the generator. On this one, as you can see, if you can see, it's a little bit different. It, there it's labeled generator start 7 and 8. So that's where we've got those. So always, always read. Don't assume even though it's the same, same brand and same tier of a product that uh, little details like that aren't going to be changed if you do a swap like this. I've got all my uh, PVs from... Uh, MPPT1 back online and as you can see we're, we're pulling solar and uh, over here these things are out of order a little bit too compared to the other one uh, the grid and load the load is was over here on the indoor unit it's over there on the outdoor and the grid was in the middle on the other one and now it's over here and these breakers are different sizes. The the generator input breaker on this one is 50 amp, and the uh, output breakers on both of these, well, actually it's input breaker and output breaker, they're both 63 amp. And that's one of the things that gives you that extra pass-through power that I talked about earlier. And, and what that pass-through is, here's actually the label on the outdoor unit. You can see the numbers there. Um, the 15,000 and uh, 63 amps, the 15,120 into 63 amps, that is, that's the, what the inverter can produce plus flow through, like from your generator or if you're also on grid. Um, so that's the, the maximum you can push through the box. So that is upgraded a bit from the uh, indoor only unit. The other differences, a little easier to see now, the Wi-Fi dongle here, which I still need to set up, but it's at least blinking, so it's got power. PV disconnect again is on the side and the fans they look much larger and much more robust and they're on the opposite side which makes sense considering it's an outdoor unit maybe in the sun and getting hot uh, it also the size of the box is a little different 
And the mounting location, I actually had to move the rail that it hangs on up to here because on this unit, it hangs from the top. The other one, it hung from about right here. And then as you can see down here too, I had to drill new holes for the tabs. This box is a little shorter. And yeah, you can't really see it over there. There's, it's, uh, this unit is also about an inch narrower. So it takes up a little less space on your wall than the uh, indoor unit that we previously had. So well, we're all up and running. Hope you got something out of this video. Uh, I'm gonna go back to you know, disregard what's going on over there. I got some kind of in, in, in process, in transition things going on over there that will show up in a later video. But uh, for now, the install went great and everything's up and running. Got all my data put back in. Now I just gotta get her back on the internet and I'll be, uh, be good to go. So thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, talk to you again real soon. Thank you.